Okay, we're back. We have a we have a lot of space here now, and let's use it. Okay, so we're talking about compound statements, and the I'm going to start using P and Q for the shorthand names of statements. So let's start right off with something called a truth table. And so I'm going to write here, in fact, let me write it uh, over here. Let's write uh, P and uh, what I'm going to write here is going to be T and F. So P here, let's get this stuff out of here. P is our just shorthand for a particular statement or proposition. So it could be, for example, the sun rises. That's a perfectly good statement and has a truth value, and we would probably agree that if we interpret this as the sun appears to rise in the morning, the truth value would be T. But it has a truth value, could be T, could be F. And so the first thing we want to look at is I don't think it would really be, well, I guess it, the way I've said it here is it is actually called a compound statement. Uh, so at least I've called it a compound statement without realizing it. So this symbol here uh, of course, means the negation, means not. So not P means the negation of P, the opposite of P. So if this is the sun rises and that's true, then this would be the sun doesn't rise, and that would be, of course, then false. Conversely, if the sun rises is false, the sun doesn't, for example, the sun doesn't literally rise, then this is not P saying the sun doesn't literally rise, and that would be true. So this is actually called negation, and this is the negation, this, this statement is the negation of this statement, and I guess I've called it here a compound statement, although here we're not really taking multiple statements, we're just reversing the statement P. And um, so this is what we call a truth table, and all that a truth table does is just keep track of the relation between the truth values of various statements. So here I've got two different statements, and I'm keeping track of the relation between the truth value of this statement and the truth value of this statement and perhaps more to the point even, this is the definition of the truth value of this statement. So when we take the negation of a statement, by definition, the negation of a statement has the opposite truth value to the statement we started with. So that's a, that's a truth table. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off here, and I'm going to, actually, I'm going to take off, I guess I'm going to take off this entire truth table and start another truth table. So let's do that here. So now what I'm going to look at is the second one of these over here, compound statement, and that's the truth table for the conjunction of two statements. And so here we have statement P and a statement Q. Maybe I should have used R and S because the sun rises and the sun sets was a good, was actually a pretty good uh, conjunction. But I'll go with P and Q here. So P could be true and Q true as well. P could be true and Q false. P could be false and Q true. P could be false and Q false. That's the only four possible combinations of truth values for these two statements. And of course, this is just two 
to the two to the second power, two squared, four. That's all the truth values we could have. And the conjunction of these two statements is the notation for it is to use this caret to put them together. So that stands for and. In fact, let me maybe even write this down. We, we say P and Q. But the actual definition of this, of its truth value, is that this is true when they're both true, naturally. And of course, this is quite natural here as to what the truth values are in each of these cases. So here, they're not both true. One is false, so we would say that the conjunction is false. Here we would say the conjunction is false. And here we'd say the conjunction is false. So this gives us the truth values of the compound statement formed by the conjunction, or as the conjunction, of these two statements here. So in every one of the possible combinations of truth values for the two individual statements, we get the truth value for the uh, combined statement. And in fact, I want to do one more thing here, and I want to take an, a, kind of an example of how this works. So let's, in terms of sets, so let's just imagine that this is the, you know, this would be an open statement. This, this says some variable x is in a set A, some particular set A, and this is that x is in the set B. So the conjunction of the two statements would be that x is in A and x is in B, which of course, given what we mean by the definition of the intersection of two sets, that would say x is in A intersect B. So that's the truth, that's the truth table for the conjunction of two statements. And now I want to look at the truth table for disjunction of two statements. And so uh, I guess we can put that down here. So let's put the disjunction of two statements here. So we have P and Q. This is going to be P with an upside down carrot, I guess you could call it. I don't know if that has some other name. Uh, this is, again, true and true, true and false, false and true, false for both. And again, I'm going to look at what these things mean in terms of X being in the set A and X being in the set B. And of course, you could guess pretty easily that this is going to be X is in the union of A and B. Uh, but let's first look at the truth values. And again, this we would say we would say that would be, we would say P or Q would be how we would say that. And so the compound statement P or Q will be true uh, if either one of them is true. So it's clearly true here. It's true here because P is true. It's true here because uh, Q is true. But it's false here because neither P nor Q is true. So it's false. And again, this would be X is in a union B. And so this defines the truth value of, this dis, of the disjunction of two, uh, of two statements. This defines the truth value of the conjunction of two statements. Now, we want to look at several more compound statements uh, I've kind of run out of space over here. We could do it here, but I'm actually going to use this a little differently over here. So let's take off our uh, uh, definition of a compound statement. And I'm going to start keeping track of the truth values here for a bunch of uh, compound statements that we, need to, that we need to kind of get a handle on. So over here, I'm going to start keeping track of the truth values, but I don't want to keep track of it by having this go on 
indefinitely this way and cover up the the, board, the uh, screen this way. So I'm going to kind of reverse direction and have things go this way. So here I'm going to have, uh, uh, let's say, P and Q. And so I'm kind of just reversing from, from this part's going to go horizontal and the part that's horizontal here is going to go vertical. So let's draw line down here like this. Let's maybe draw a line across here and let's put in here T T T F F T and F F. So as you can see I've just kind of reversed the directions here from horizontal to vertical, vertical to horizontal and so Let's start keeping track of the things we've done. We have the negation of P. Well, the negation of P is going to be false here and false here and true here and true here. I only have to look at the top row to see what the truth values are here. Here, I'm going to have false, true, false, and true. I only need to look at the truth values for Q to take the reverse. And so, Let's draw a line down here like this. Uh, we've also now looked at P and Q. We've looked at P or Q. And the truth values there are T, F, 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 and T, 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 F, just what we've done over here. And so now, let's actually, before uh, going any further here, let's look at one more item here. One more compound statement. And this is a compound statement, actually, that uh, Hammock, in his Book of Proof, refers to, but he doesn't actually use the usual symbol. He doesn't actually have a symbol. He says there isn't a symbol for this. And actually, there is a symbol that's, that's pretty commonly used, and that is this symbol, upside down carrot with a line stuck on the bottom of it. And so first, before saying what it means, I'm going to just write down four truth values here. And I'm going to write down F, T, T, and F. Notice several things that are going on here. So this, first of all, this is a a combination of truth values that hasn't shown up yet. So this is truly a new uh, compound statement, not the same as any of these. Also notice that this, these truth values say that this compound statement is true if P is true and Q is false, or if Q is true and P is false. So it's really true if P or Q is true, but not both. So it's the same over here as this one. If neither P nor Q is true, then this compound statement is false. But this differs from the one above it in that it's false when both P and Q are true. So this is what we would call the exclusive or. And in fact, let me just write that down here. This is, doesn't have its own name other than that. It's the exclusive or, so it's P or Q, but not both. So that a, is a, an additional useful uh, compound statement. Notice something else here. Here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines. I have I guess you could say five compound statements, and then I have the elementary statements here. Let me take this back off so I'm not looking at you through, <laughs> through this. Uh, so we have seven different, all different combinations of truth values here. Well, how many possible combinations of truth values are there in this table that I'm constructing? Well, there are two 
elementary statements, and each one of them can have either one of two truth values. So there's four possible truth values for any compound statement, F, T, F, T, 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 F. There's four uh, positions for a truth value, and each of them can only take a T or an F. So there are four, sorry, there are two to the fourth possible combinations here of truth values. Two to the fourth is 16. There's only 16 different FT combinations that I can put in here, and I've already got seven of them. There's only nine more, and we're going to see a bunch of those, but we're not actually going to write them all down. But so far, every one of the seven actually has a statement, either a simple statement or a compound statement, that gives us that combination of truth values. And one more thing I think I'll mention here is that, in fact, every one of the 16 possible combinations of truth values can be obtained from two elementary statements, two constituent statements of the compound statements. Every one of the 16 combinations can be obtained by just putting together into a compound statement uh, three basic compound statements, and they're the three that we mentioned in the definition that I had up here that I just took off a few minutes ago. And that is, we can form every one of the 16 possible combinations of truth values just from the conjunction, the disjunction, and the negation. And that's a kind of a useful exercise for you to see how you can uh, construct a compound statement that gives you any particular truth value. So there's nine that we haven't done. I think we're going to do two or three more here. Uh, but the remaining ones, I would, I guess I'll probably give that as, to you as an exercise to construct compound statement for each of the remaining uh, combinations of truth values that we aren't going to actually do. Okay, so here I think what uh, we will do is let me do one more of these truth tables here, and let's do this truth table. Uh, I'll keep these on the screen uh, for the moment, and we'll do one more truth table. Um, no, in fact, we're not going to do that. <laughs> let's take these off the screen and we'll do our next truth table over here, and then I'll continue to keep track of what we do over here. So let's take these off and then we'll uh, come back in just a moment once we've got this cleaned off over here.